Amen. I'm going to do my best to be very concise this morning and be very accurate because it's always my job as the pastor here to make sure the believer is maximizing their life and that you're experiencing life on a high level. You heard it here, real believers, many, many times. The devil did not invent fun. The devil did not invent pleasure. Amen. The devil did not invent, the devil did not invent success. Amen. And I want you to understand that because a lot of times we understand the things of God, meaning that they taste, they taste like dry toast. Okay, God has way more flavor than the devil can savor. God invented pleasure. And a lot of the hang up what people have with uh, associating the body of Christ and, and what we do as far as our covenant lifestyle is concerned, people think that we don't have fun. People think that we can't laugh. People think that we can't turn up. Now, there's definitely things that we do in our turn up, amen, that's different than other folks, amen, because what we do should be organically driven by the Holy Spirit because we understand something that the world doesn't understand, that we're spiritual beings first. We are spiritual beings that live on the inside of a body and we possess a soul. So pleasure can't come from the devil. And most of the time, an unbeliever who don't understand God, they associate pleasure with sin. Well, that's... That's, that's, that's not unusual. That's common to the human existence. That's why the Bible says that sin will be pleasurable for a season, but that it won't be a lifetime of pleasure. Amen. God says if you obey and serve him in Job 36 and 11, it says if you obey and serve, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Somebody say, I want my years in pleasure. I don't want my pleasure to have a time limit on it. So when you, when you have the wrong type of covenant, your pleasure will have a time limit on it. Amen. And it's the kind of pleasure that will dry you up, sift you as wheat. Amen. You will find yourself alone without purpose and without understanding what you were really put on this earth to do. And so don't tell me that you could have money and you could have success and know who you are because we see people dying like that all the time with money and success. Amen. And they die a pauper's death. Amen. They die a crackhead's death with millions of dollars in their bank account. Amen. They're still having drug overdoses and stuff like that because something in the inside is not filled. Amen. So I want to give you what we're talking about this morning. Amen. In its proper context. And it's called covenant foundations. Somebody say covenant foundations. Because this is what you have to keep in your life with everything that you touch. If you understand your covenant with God and how you live as a believer, this type of covenant principles will be in every relationship that you have with anything on the earth that you have purpose to do with. Somebody say purpose to do with. I don't know if that's really a saying or not. I don't know if I'm saying that properly. or, But what I mean is purpose to do with. It means that anything that is purposeful in your life that you have to do with, amen, you apply these same principles to that purpose and you will find yourself prospering wherever you go and whatever you touch, amen, and whatever you do, you will find this, you will find these principles of prosperity. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about the ability to do well. Because when you're really prospering, amen, you won't just have a bank account uh, that's huge and your mind will be all schizophrenic and twisted up and on drugs and all this crazy stuff and drama. That ain't what I'm talking about because money can't bring that kind of prosperity. Amen. Finances is a byproduct of prosperity. But when you're prospering, everything you touch prospers. That means when people get around me, guess what? Just because you're around me, guess what? You're going to prosper. It's because you come around. When you come around me, you're going to find purpose in your life. Just being around me. That's why it's no coincidence. If you start spending time with me, you start walking into your purpose. You start, you say, man, bitch, man, I, man, you, I, I just so much wisdom in you. It's not because I got wisdom, because the Holy Spirit has prospered me. It's going to prosper you, the same spirit. That's why the devil tell you don't be around the pastor. Don't go to the church. The devil don't want you to be in, inside this place because guess what? There's prosperity up inside of here. Amen. There's prosperity in here prosperity in here. You can't get close to kingdom people and not prosper. Because I'm not alone. You can't get close to kingdom people and not, not prosper. Amen. I was with my guy last night uh, getting a late night haircut and I told him, I, I said, hey man. He said, you know, his son was talking about starting the business. I said, hey man, start the business right now. He said, what? I said, 
What you mean start? I said, right now. Start it right now. I said, do you know you can start his business right now, give him something that he can build on right now at six years old, something he can grow and cultivate right now? I'm trying to tell somebody, tell somebody out here something. You can cultivate his credit right now. Man, by the time he's 14 years old, he could be doing some stuff that you wasn't even doing when you was 30. Come on, somebody. But it's about being around the right people. So who you set around in your life and who you around, if you're around hood, hood, hood folks and, 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 and folks that got that kind of mentality they want to plot and plan and trick and trap amen then that's what kind of mentality you're gonna have that's what you're gonna do but if you're around folks who understand how to go get it how to have the mentality how to keep family how to raise children how to handle your money how to handle business guess what your life gonna start looking like that amen if you won't cheat if you listen if you're hanging around cheaters you're gonna be a cheater if you're hanging around freaks you're gonna be a freak Amen. You, you, listen, whoever you hang around, that's the covenant plate you're eating from. Somebody say covenant plates. Now you can. I, I don't care. I don't care what kind of looks I get today, because I'm definitely coming down some streets. I don't care what kind of looks I get today. I really don't care. My job is to get dysfunction off of you and get prosperity to you. And I ain't talking, I, I gotta say this again, I ain't talking about, because prosperity, just like grace, has been prostituted. And it's all about stuff and stuff and cars and look what I got and this is what I got. Well, drug dealers got it too. And don't tell me they prospering with all the death that they sow into the community. Hey Amen. Come on, somebody. So I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about a spiritual understanding of who you are as a person. That's real prosperity. The Bible says, what should a man give in exchange for his soul? What do you give in exchange for your soul? Nothing. The only time you'll give something in exchange for your soul, that means you don't understand who you are. You're a person like Esau. That means iniquity rules your mindset. The Bible says in Hebrews, iniquity ruled his mindset. So it's easy for him to give up his birthright. Give it what he was, what what was properly owed owed to him as the oldest son. That double portion that was properly owed to him, that was supposed to sustain him and generations after him. He gave it up for a morsel of meat, or meal, or whatever, a bowl of soup, because he was tired. I'm never gonna be that tired, where I'll give up who I am in life. Now some of us, listen, you gotta understand what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about tired, I'm not just talking about, I'm not talking about being out of breath. I'm not talking about being out of breath. I'm talking about tired, and some of you guys are already facing this type of tiredness, where you're questioning your position in the faith. How long am I gonna be at Real Believers? How long am I gonna live this kind of kingdom lifestyle? When is this gonna phase out for me? You're already getting tired. You don't see the purpose in it. You don't see the plan in it. You don't see what God really wants to do in your life and your, your mind is getting tired. You're not physically tired, but you have mental fatigue about being faithful, about being steadfast, about being in your set place. I'm preaching and you said, you saying amen. And some of y'all clapping and some of y'all tired. You know, whenever God, whenever God gets up on this microphone to preach, amen, because I know, I, I know I'm not God, but I know God uses my mouth. And I yield my mouth. I was telling my man just yesterday, I told him, I said, man, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a live feed preacher. I said, I got my outline, but I'm a live feed. I'm always plugged into the Holy Ghost all the time. And so, man, I'm up here prophesying. You don't even know it. You're so used to, you're laughing and Bishop, Bishop Cookhouse, he's funny, he's cool. Um, you're laughing, you're having a great time in service, but I'm really prophesying to you because some of you guys are really, really in a really dark spiritual place. Okay. And you're questioning covenant connections and why am I here and what am I doing and you're forgetting you're forgetting how lost you were when you came and that's why believers should never ever even though God will separate your sin as far as the east is from the west and he'll keep it separated he'll the Bible says he'll throw them into the sea of forgetfulness that's how God forgives 
Our minds will have the ability to work that way, and it's good because God wants us to remember. Remember, that's why he always told the people, remember this. And he told them, remember that. And re remember when I brought you out of here. And re remember when I told you to do this. And he always tells us to remember because we'll get high on ourselves and think that we ain't really that messed up. I really didn't have that kind of stuff going on when I got, my marriage really wasn't that bad when I came to the church. You'll forget, you'll get high on yourself. Something like the nature of the flesh, flesh like to get high. And it'll get high on itself. You'll start thinking that you are greater than you are. You gotta remember who you are. Remember where God brought you from. Some of you guys can't bring nobody to church because people don't know you came out of nothing. You can't witness because you can't tell nobody your story because you're above that. You ain't never above your testimony. Your testimony is the number one arsenal that God wants to use to tell somebody else they ain't always look like this. They ain't always dress like this. They ain't always been this free. They ain't always had this kind of wisdom. They ain't always had this kind of success. You need to tell somebody where God brought you from. Tell them what kind of, co what kind of covenant connection that you really involved in. There should be a scar on you where you had to cut away the flesh. Amen. Somebody say amen. Go to Galatians 4. If you got to say amen. Amen, you got it? All right, but let's read it, verse three. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Under the elements of the world. Somebody say, under the elements of the world. Now, this is what I want to kind of deal with today in, in, in talking about covenant foundations. There are elements in the world, amen, that you have to work through, amen, that you have to work through when you're dealing with covenant stuff. Somebody say, dealing with covenant stuff. Now, now, where my picture at? Now, you see over there? See that hole over there? That's the ugliest part of the picture. Now, you see that ship over there? That's a battleship. That's an aircraft carrier. That's, they say that's like a city on the water. You could be on that ship a whole year and not meet everybody. Right? Those ships are carried over 4,000 people. Now, I wanted to be a sailor at one point in my life, so I love Navy stuff. So, uh, you see here, you see the picture. You see the beauty of the landscape. You see the hole in the ground. It's the ugliest part of, 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 of the picture, but it is the most substantial part that you need to be paying attention to because that's where the foundation is taking place. When I got this message, it was Mother's Day around this time, so I'll tell you how long I've been in my spirit about certain stuff. It was Mother's Day about this time, and I was looking out the window. We was in a penthouse suite somewhere in San Diego. And we, I'm sitting in this room and I'm looking out the window because when we got there, I think it was evening and you really couldn't see. All you could see is the lights and the city uh, uh, way up high and then you seen the blackness of, you know, and you knew that if you've been, if you've seen the ocean at night, you knew that was the ocean. You said, man, the ocean's out there. You see some lights for some boats, but you really didn't know what kind of boats were out there. And then uh, that morning, I remember I got up and I went and sat on the couch out there and I looked and I said, man, there was a battleship out there. And then even further than that, other pictures, I got there was some other battleships and stuff out there. I said, like, man, this is so cool. And I begin to look at that foundation. And I said, man, God, and I'm looking at all these skyscrapers and buildings and things around me. And I'm looking, I said, look at how they have to dig through the elements. Look at how they have to hold back the elements. Because in that picture, when you see the foundation, some people look at the hole, but I like construction. I like, I, I don't know, I like to think about stuff. I like puzzles, I like to think. I'm a thinker. And, I, and people don't understand about me. I like, I like to think, I like to analyze stuff. And I'm sitting here looking, and I'm looking at how they dug that foundation, but I'm looking at how they had to fight back all the elements just to dig the foundation. A lot of times we pay attention to how the building go up and we see the construction and you miss the whole super duper important part of the process, which is sometimes the ugliest part. If you've enjoyed this word today, then you need to get this message in its entirety. 
To receive the link to select your desired message or series, please send your info to wordlife at chfgm.org and type wordlife in the subject bar. Thank you so much for your continued support. Real hope, real life, real message. It's the grimiest part because it's the part where you got to dig down and you got to deal with all the imperfections in the ground and the, and the rocks and the boulders and you got you to gotta prepare to build in that space. So what they did because they got the ocean, you imagine how many gallons of water are in the Pacific over there at that time and it's right next to the roadway and you know if they didn't put the right barriers that that ocean could have just spilt into that area digging that close to the water so they had to put these big old these big huge metal things down around to hold all the elements around while we're digging the goal is to go up but you have to deal with your foundation first Now, a lot of us are looking at the buildings, we look at the skyscraper, we say, man, what a marvelous, this is amazing, what a, these are beautiful structures, and we don't understand what holds up that beautiful structure. We don't understand what's really took, what took, what, what took place to make it come up. There's so many things that take place because everything that happens above, way above in the sky when they build that thing, everything that they want to get rid of, everything that, that's garbage or waste has to filter down through that entire building and go right back down into the foundation and the foundation moves it away. They call it mechanicals. So while they're digging that foundation, guess what? They're bringing the electrical underground. They're bringing all the plumbing underground. They're bringing all the different cables and networks, signals, and all that stuff that's going to be a part of how that building survives in that atmosphere. It all has to go in at the foundation. A lot of us are trying to skip places in God, and we're trying to just get to these other places where we say God is going to bless us. And God, has, listen, if you don't have the foundation and all the details of the foundation put together, the elements will eventually cave you in. The elements. I love that picture because I was just sitting there looking at that picture, and I looked at the battleship. I said, "Man, the battleship." That, that water, the street, the cars, the other buildings next to it. They protect it. There's protection for that foundation in its vulnerable state. God can't grow you unless you let God protect you. Let me take you here. Uh, we're going to come back to Galatians in a second. But let me take you to Psalms. Let me take you to Psalm. You got it? Psalms 1. If y'all think that's deep, I'm not trying to be deep. I'm just talking about a foundation. Amen? You have to understand that God want to build you up. Can't build you up without having a foundation. Jesus referred to himself as the chief cornerstone. You know you never ever see the chief cornerstone? He's deep within the foundation. He never, you never ever see the chief cornerstone. It is buried deep within the foundation. That cornerstone keeps everything level and keeps everything plumb. So when you build on it, that the structure will not be crooked. Jesus said, I am the chief cornerstone. Amen? So God understands foundation. He understands why you need a proper foundation. And in Jesus Christ, he is our proper foundation. You got Psalms 1? Let's go here at, at, verse, at verse 1. Come on, verse 1, Psalms 1. There's two covenants here displayed in this book. And I want to show you both covenants, and we're going to focus on the first one. We'll get to the second one sometime later. But let's 
Come here and let's read now at verse 1, Dr. Sharon. Come on and read for me. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Come on. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. There's a lot of requirements there, amen, that it's giving you that we don't pay attention to. We just look at the last part and say, whatever he doeth shall prosper. But a lot of this other stuff is not in order. Amen. And we're going to, as we go in this series, we're going to break down, we're going to break down this text in detail. And I'm going to show you how to have proper things in order. Amen. So that your covenant foundation will not be broken. And you can, amen. So that you can have this blessing. This, the blessing part here is whatever he doeth shall prosper. How many, how many want you want to prosper in whatever you do? Amen. I know I want to. I don't want failure to be a part of my life at all. Okay, let's read the second covenant. Let's read the second covenant. Let's read. Come on, it says, the ungodly, come on. The ungodly are not so, come on. but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. A, a shaft is like a, a rootless plant or a bush, a tumbleweed. Come on. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous Come for on. the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish shall perish so it's either if we want to cut it short it's either perish or prosper somebody say perish or prosper so if you're doing it the wrong way you're going to perish you may even look like you're thriving right now but it's a short lived time you're going to perish because you can't build stuff on a, in an unrighteous way and think that you're going to have the same type of prosperity as someone who is flowing with the right type of covenant, understanding the right type of position. It's going to pair. Eventually, you're going to go through something that's going to take you out of it all. Amen. Amen? So there's two. So there's two. L look at your neighbor. Say, there's two. Which one do you have? Which one do you have? So this is talking about counsel. So the first thing it talks about, he talks about is counsel. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the what? Counsel. So this is truly about the tables that you sit at. This is truly about the tables that you sit at. If you sit at the wrong tables, you'll think you're wise when you're not. You sit at the wrong tables, you'll think you're prepared and you're not. Remember, me and Brother Eric were talking, we were working in the house. Remember this conversation, Brother Eric? Brother Eric said, I do, a, I do conscious rap. And I'm not going to tell you our conversation because that was between me and Brother Eric. He said, I do conscious stuff. on And so I asked him because no one, I knew no one ever asked him this. I said, what makes it conscious? I invoked thought immediately because then we started to talk about what we do, why we do what we do, conversations that we have, things that we talk about. What he 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 had to have that conversation with somebody who got a who's who we're working from an elevated platform. Not that the young man is not in, not intelligent and not thoughtful, and uh, and he really is a smart, gifted young man. But even being all of that, you still need to be able to sit at a table where you can elevate. Problem is, like I said, we get high on ourselves and can't nobody tell you nothing. Can't nobody give you wisdom for nothing and you've arrived. Well, guess what? That's all you get is what you got. In order to elevate, you must have superior counsel. Who giving you your counsel? Is it the news? Who giving you your counsel? Is it your family? Some of you guys got your family so high. So high, you got them placed so high, and you're only gonna be the counsel that they get. That's why it's so important for believers to read your Bible. And let me say this too. Let me say this, brother Greg, brother Greg, brother Greg. Let me say this, brother Greg. 
Not only is it important to read your Bible, but it's important, Brother Greg, to be taught your Bible. Because if you're taught by the gift that God has given in the Bible, it will come from an elevated consciousness. So don't let nobody tell you, I don't need church, I can read the Bible at home. Wrong again. Ain't what Bobby Boucher said? He said, mama is wrong again. Huh? He thought everything mama said was true. He said, he said mama said, alligators is angry because they got all them teeth and no toothbrush. And sometimes you're sitting at the table of mama said. Sometimes you sit at the table of mama said. Some of y'all families and even your mama is a liar when it comes to God's word. Matter of fact, the Bible says, let every man be a liar and let God's word be true. So sometimes you got to measure what people are teaching you against the word. And if you have no understanding of the word, how can you compare what they told you to the word when you ain't read the word? How can you compare covenant to covenant? You can't compare covenant to covenant when you have no covenant in you first. You got to get this covenant deep down in you to eradicate the covenant. A lot of times we heard first. A lot of times the stuff that we heard first is not the truth. But because we heard it first, we'll value that. We'll value foolishness and it ain't based on nothing but a false covenant. Ooh, yes, what an amazing word that was. Hey, I'm Pastor Jordan Woods of Real Believers Faith Center. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Power for Life. I know that word has been a blessing to you. Please come and see us again. Tune into the next installment of this great series because the man of God has a lot more to say. What an amazing word. We all should want to build our world and build our lives on covenant relationships and let that be the foundation of our lives. Amen. Hey, if you're ever in the Twin Cities area, that's Minneapolis and St. Paul, please come and see us right here in the Lion's Den, Real Believers Faith Center, 2010 Fremont Avenue North. We'd love to welcome you with open arms. And if you want to give to this incredible ministry, we welcome you to do so. Please visit the link on your screen. Everything helps to support ministry and keep us pushing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have a prayer request, please, please submit your prayer request. We want to pray with you. That's my time. I'm Pastor Jordan Woods once again. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, take your dominion.